Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Welcome back if you're a regular viewer. Thank you very much for joining me today for my latest video. So this video is a week of my handmade wardrobe and it's a type of video I really enjoy filming. I'm going to pop on every day this week from Saturday through to Friday, all being well, and share with you each day what I'm wearing for my handmade wardrobe. So I'll try and include details of the pattern or patterns I'm wearing and any hacks and adjustments I've made. Also, I'll include details of the fabric that I've used and where I got it from. And I'll share a picture so you can see what it looks like on and how I've styled it. And as the week goes on, I'll probably also share a little bit about what I'm up to during the week. So there's a bit of a chatty element to this video too, but it's mostly all about the sewing. But I really enjoy this type of video because firstly, it's always nice to talk about sewing and patterns and that sort of thing, obviously. But also it does make me reach for different things in my wardrobe that I haven't worn for a while. Yeah, and that's quite fun sort of picking out different things to wear that I'm going to talk about. So I'm really looking forward to popping on every day this week and sharing what I'm wearing. And I hope you'll enjoy hearing about it too. So I'm kicking off this week today, which is Saturday, and it's just coming up to midday here. And as it's Saturday, my husband's off work and the children are at home. And we've had a really nice morning together, actually. Um, it was my husband's birthday this week gone, and the children were really keen to take him out to breakfast, which is their favourite meal to um, go out to eat. So we went into our local town, which has a Premier Inn, and the Premier Inn do a really nice buffet breakfast that has something for everyone. So... We all left with full tummies. My husband enjoyed it too. He does like a, a good breakfast. Um, so we did that. Then we went into town to the park and had a little play there. And we're now back home and the children and my husband are in the garden. So I thought while it's nice and quiet um, in the house, I'd sneak back in and pop in here to share with you what I'm wearing today. And today I've got on a jersey dress that I've got out for the first time since the weather got cooler this year. It's a really nice comfy one to wear actually. And this dress um, is a hack um, of two different patterns. So I've used one pattern for the top, another pattern for the skirt to make this dress. And the pattern I use for the top is this one here. It's the Agnes top pattern by Tilly and the Buttons, which is a really nice jersey top pattern, one of Tilly and the Buttons' older patterns. I'll show you the line drawings. It's quite a close fitting jersey top pattern. You can either make it with a long sleeve or a sleeve that finishes just above the elbow. And it's got a scoop neck um, and you can add a couple of little details like this little ruching at the front or these sort of um, more sort of puffy sort of um, voluminous sleeves with a bit of ruching on them too. But I generally just make this one version here and this is the version I've used um, to hack into a dress. I've got the long sleeves, the plain scoop neck and then what I've done is I've used that pattern and then uh, merged it by just um, sort of drawing the pattern lines to merge with the skirt from another pattern which is the pattern from this book here. Another Tilly and the Buttons um, pattern. This is the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. So it's a book full of lots of jersey patterns or patterns for stretchy fabrics. And I've used the skirt from this pattern here, which is the Freya top and dress pattern, which again is quite a close fitting jersey top and dress. Um, and it has this nice A-line skirt on the dress version. So I just borrowed that A-line skirt and used the sort of lines of the Agnes top to sort of merge into that skirt and turn it into a dress. And it's quite nice actually because I love the Freya dress but it has quite a high neck so it's really cosy and perfect for cold weather. But this dress with a scoop neck and with the kind of Agnes top version means it's quite a nice transitional dress where I don't want one that's going to make me too cosy. So it's quite simple and I use the same size on each pattern so it's quite easy to grade. I generally make a size 2 on turning the buttons patterns which is designed for um, bust 32 inches, waist 26 inches and hips 35 inches and I am um, bust 32 waist 26 hip 36 so slightly larger on the hips but I don't think I grazed out when I made this dress I think I made this dress when I was quite new to dressmaking and I wasn't really doing much grading between sizes at that stage so I think maybe if I made it again I would maybe grade out to give a little bit more room around the hips but because it's stretchy fabric I think it is fine it doesn't feel sort of too clingy there in terms of sizing I thought I mentioned on these patterns both the Freya top and the Agnes top um, go from a UK 6 up to a UK 20 so they're not part of the Tilly the Buttons extended size range I think now Tilly the Buttons are releasing patterns in extended size range which takes you up um, to quite a lot higher sizes so much more inclusive um, but yeah these are some of the older patterns so the largest size is for a bust of 44 inches but they're both patterns I really love and this is a really comfy dress to wear and I made it in a cotton jersey fabric which I think works really well for both the Freya and the Agnes and it's quite a cute cotton jersey I think with all those little hearts on it and I got this from First for Fabrics quite a long time ago, so it definitely won't be in stock 
there anymore but they do always have some fun cotton jerseys so it's definitely worth checking out their website or link them down below but yeah it's quite a cute little heart print um i do often like to get this dress out around valentine's day too but i'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on um aside from merging the two patterns i think the only other adjustment i made is to lengthen the sleeve slightly just because I do have arms that are on the long side and I like having a nice long sleeve to keep my wrists nice and cosy. Before I started making my own clothes, I used to find sleeves would always turn up a bit short on me and it used to be, I was constantly tugging my sleeves down. So I love being able to make my own clothes and not have to do that anymore. So that is what I'm wearing today. A bit of a pattern hack dress. It's nice and comfy, but I'm going to go and join my family outside now. So I'll pop on again tomorrow, which will be Sunday. So yeah, see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Sunday morning now and it's a bit of a chilly morning here today, or at least it's chilly in the house. I haven't actually ventured outdoors yet this morning. We've had a bit of a slow start to the morning here um, because yesterday we were up quite early and out the door to go for breakfast. We thought this morning we'd have a bit more of a yeah, relaxed start to the day and we wouldn't rush to get out of our pyjamas. So that was quite nice, but we did eventually make our way upstairs to get dressed and my husband and children are still upstairs. So I thought I'd pop down first and share with you what I'm wearing before they come down and start playing and it gets a bit louder down here. And today I've got on a sweater dress because I thought that'd be quite nice for this chillier weather. And this sweater dress is one of my older makes actually, but it's one I always enjoy reaching for when the weather gets cooler. And I made it using a pattern from one of Sir Everett's ebooks. I think it's one of their old ebooks. I'm not sure it's the oldest, but it's this one here. It is their Capsule Wardrobe City Break ebook. And it's quite nice because it all comes the PDF um, on your computer and you can just print out the bits you want, or the patterns you want. And it includes five patterns. It says five patterns to take you from day to night on a city break. So I think it includes a coat pattern and a jeans pattern and a shirt and shirt dress pattern and a skirt pattern. And the pattern I'm wearing today, which is the Molly dress and top, which is a jersey pattern. And the reason I bought this ebook was for the Molly dress and top because I really like the look of the pattern. I thought it looked really comfy and easy to wear. And I thought it looked quite versatile too. And I have made quite a few versions actually of both the top and dress. It's definitely been one I've made a lot. I haven't actually made any other, other patterns from this magazine yet or this ebook. They're still um, yeah, just sitting on my computer. I haven't printed any other ones out, but I'll show you the um, line drawings of the Molly dress and top, which are here. So it's quite a nice relaxed fit jersey top and dress with a round neck and these dropped shoulders and then you can either make it as a top with a slightly dipped hem or as a sweater dress um, and it's quite nice and cozy I've got a t-shirt underneath it today if you layer it up so it works well for cool weather but I guess you could also make it with a lightweight jersey just a standalone dress as well in terms of sizing this pattern yeah it's one of so over its older ones so it falls into that older size range so it goes from a UK 8 up to a UK 20 and the largest size for a bust of 45 inches. I think for some of its new patterns, they now um, release an extended size range that starts from a six and goes up to a size 30. And when I make the Molly top and dress, I always go for the size eight. And that's designed for bust 33, waist 26, hips 36. So my waist and hips, but one inch larger on the bust, but I find that absolutely fine. And I, as I said, it's not designed to be too close fitting anyway. So I think an extra inch doesn't really make too much difference. It's a really nice, simple sew. It comes together really nicely. Um, it's really, really comfy to wear. Um, yeah, so the version I made today is the dress version. And I made it in this really nice French terry fabric. I got it quite a long time ago from Lily and Mimi Fabric Shop, who I'll link down below. And I really like the print. I like the kind of pretty blue colour with these pink flowers on. Quite a large scale floral print, which I don't often go for, but I just really like it in this fabric. Um, yeah, there's some little yellows in there too on some of the flowers. There's a little yellow bit there. Just, there's quite a pretty colour range in this fabric. And I'll link Lily and Mimi down below. I don't think this print will still be in stock, but they always stock some really nice jerseys and French terries. But because it's a French terry, it makes it nice and cosy. And I've teamed it with a pair of thick tights and got a t-shirt underneath. So I'm feeling quite cosy in it today. And I think I made the straight size eight. And um, again, like yesterday's um, dress I was wearing, um, I've just um, lengthened the sleeves, I think slightly, but not made any other adjustments. But I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on and see what the length looks like on me. I guess it's on the shorter side and I'm five foot six for reference. But it just comes together really nicely. I like that it's not too tight so you can layer it up for this weather. And it should keep me nice and cosy today. And we're going out um, ice skating this afternoon. Um, so I think it'll be nice and cosy for being on the ice rink too. So yeah, 
that's what I'm wearing today. So I'm going to head off now. Um, my children probably want to come downstairs and get stuck into some games. We're just having a morning at home, which will be nice. So I'll leave you here and I'll see you again tomorrow for Monday. So yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Monday now. It's early afternoon here, just coming up to one o'clock. And I've had a bit of a busy morning. So it's nice to finally be sitting down and sharing with you what I'm wearing because I feel like I've been dashing around all morning. I um, did the school run and then I went for a run. Um, then we had the food shop arrive. Then I had to pop out to get my flu jab. So it's good to get that done. Then I've just been back at home. And I did some batch cooking, some cleaning, all those household chores. So today I'm wearing quite a practical outfit for just getting on with things around the house. I've got on a pair of ready to wear jeans and I've got on a handmade sweatshirt and you probably recognise the pattern from this ruffle on the sleeves. Um, it's this pattern here, it's a paper cut solar sweater and tee pattern which is a favourite of mine. Um, I've made both the t-shirt and the sweatshirt version, I really like them both. So this is the, well, here are the line drawings here, it's quite a boxy relaxed fit sweatshirt and tee with a round neck and a dropped shoulder and you can add on this really cute ruffle um, that's kind of sandwiched between or kind of sandwiched along the shoulder seam and I really like that feature. You can make it without that ruffle too and it makes a really nice sort of simple t-shirt or I've never made actually the sweatshirt without the ruffle but I think it'll make a nice again simple sweatshirt too but I do love the little ruffle feature on this one and in terms of sizing and um, I've got an older pattern but they've updated their size range now. They used to kind of come in extra small, small, medium, large but they've now moved to numbers so the sizes go from a one to an eight which takes you from a bust of 30 inches up to a bust of 46 and a half inches. And I've always made the size, I think it's a size two on the new range, which was the smallest size in the old range, which is a bust 32 inches, waist 24 and a half inches and hips 34 and a half inches, which is smaller than me on the waist and hips. But again, it's quite a boxy pattern. So I've always gone for my bust measurement and it kind of just sort of drops down from there. So I haven't needed to grade out. But the version I'm wearing today is in this really lovely and um, fleece backed sweatshirt fabric by Atelier Brunette. It's one of their older fleece back sweatshirt fabrics. This is one of my older makes again. I think I'm getting all the older makes out this week. Um, the handmade wardrobe videos do make me do that because they do make me kind of have a rootle in my drawers and get out things I haven't worn for a while. But it's a really lovely fabric this one. It's kind of got this, I don't know if it's black or very 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 dark blue base with these little gold flecks all over it. It's really pretty. And so yeah I made this ruffled version of the sweatshirt and I've used the same fabric for the cuffs and the neckline. You can see the neckline here. It's quite a sort of wide necklace so you can see a bit of my t-shirt peeking out underneath um but yeah um, it just it just sews up really nicely this one for this version I actually ended up I think taking it in quite a lot around the sort of waist area to kind of give it a more fitted sweatshirt look because I made this quite early on when I started sewing and I think at that point I was going for more fitted look garments and then as I've started sewing a bit more and I guess maybe trends have changed and things I do quite like a boxy sweatshirt these days so I think I really should revisit this pattern and actually try making a more boxy version of the sweatshirt because I think both the versions I made were ones I made quite a long time ago and they are a bit more fitted. I'll stand up a bit so you can see. Yeah, it's not got such a straight fit because I have taken it in a little bit. So I still really enjoy wearing this one and um, I just love the fabric and it's quite a lightweight um, fleece back sweatshirt fabric, um, similar to the more recent Atelier Brunette fleece back sweatshirts. I think they released some maybe last year again with a different design, but they're quite nice and lightweight. So when I've been running around the house doing chores, I haven't got too overheated in it. So that's why I'm wearing today. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. And I think the only adjustments I made was as ever to lengthen the sleeve slightly. And I think I might have lengthened the body slightly too, just to bring it down so it kind of covers the top of my jeans and keeps them nice and cozy around the middle. So yeah, um, it's just a nice, relaxed, easy to wear one. I do love that little ruffle. I think it adds a little different extra touch to this sweatshirt. But I'm hoping now to go and do a little bit of sewing after a busy morning racing around doing chores and things. So I'll say goodbye now and I'll see you again tomorrow for Tuesday. So yeah, fingers crossed I'll have maybe an hour of uninterrupted sewing before I need to start getting things ready and um, heading out to the school one. So I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Tuesday morning now and I've just got back from the school run. So I'm coming on here to talk about what I'm wearing quite a lot earlier than I did yesterday. And today I've got on a handmade top and a handmade pinafore. So it's a double handmade day today. And the top I'm wearing um, is one of my favourite staples for this time of year. I've got this top in lots of different colours and patterns. But I'm wearing a more plain version today. And it is a top from this book here, which is the stretch book by Tilly the Buttons. It is the Freya top pattern. 
so I'll get the line drawings up here. So the dress I was wearing on Saturday, um, borrowed the skirt from the Freya, but I'm wearing the top version today, this one here, with a mock neckline, and it's nice and close fitting, so perfect for kind of layering up, and I'm wearing the long sleeve version. And it's a really nice, simple sew. I find the Freya top comes together really nicely because it's this sort of stand-up mock neckline. You don't have to worry about getting the neckband to lie flat. And I really like the neckband on this one, actually. I don't find it too tight or too high, so it's not too restrictive, but it's still really nice and cosy. The only downside of the Freya tops, it hasn't got the biggest size range ever. It goes from a UK 6 up to a UK 20, as do all the patterns in this stretch book. And the largest size is for a bust of 44 inches. And I always make the size 2, um, which is designed for bust 32, waist 26, hips 35. So I'm one inch larger on the hips, but I never bothered grading out. And the fabric's always nice and stretchy that I use these tops. So I find it stretches over my hips fine and haven't needed to grade out. And the fabric I use for my top today is a fabric I really, really love, actually. It's such a nice, comfy fabric to wear. It's a ribbed tensile jersey fabric by Meat Milk. It's called their Derby Rib Jersey, I think. I got it from Minerva, and it comes in a whole range of colours, and I'll link it down below. Some really pretty colours, actually, um, and I've been very tempted by a few other colourways, but I've only so far bought this colourway. And this is called the Shell Colour. So it's kind of like, it's hard to show on the camera, but it's kind of a creamy, soft, um, off-white colour. And I think it goes quite nicely with the denim of my pinafore. And it's really nice, slinky, cosy, comfy fabric to wear. So yeah, I'm definitely tempted to get more and make another plain frayer with this ribbing. I do like the ribbing on the frayer. I think it works really nicely and gives it almost like a bit of a retro vibe. Oh, and I thought I'd mention, um, although the frayer top isn't the most size inclusive, a great alternative is the Nico top by True Buyers. Um, it's a very similar shape to it, the frayer top, with a mock neckline and a sort of tight fitting sort of turtleneck style top. But it comes in a larger size range um, in PDF, so it's worth checking that one out um, if you're interested in this style of top, but with a larger size range. But that's why I'm wearing um, underneath, and then I've layered um, the frayer top underneath this pinafore, um, which is this pattern here, the Fiona Sundress pattern by Closet Core Patterns. And it's quite an interesting pinafore pattern, this one. It's a bit different, I think. I'll show you the line drawings. It's designed to be quite a close-fitting pinafore. Um, it's got princess seams so that kind of really hugs your body. I love a princess seam for how it kind of shapes around your body. And it's got quite a straight-fitting skirt, which you can either make as a midi-length skirt with these side slits, or as a knee-length or an above-the-knee-length version too. My version, I think I made it somewhere between the mini and the knee-length version, so it's above the knee but not really short. And then it's got buttons all the way down the front and these patch pockets, which are quite nice and roomy. Actually, there's quite a lot of room in there for a phone or keys or something. And there are two different um, variations to the back. Either this sort of straight back with straight straps or this cute sort of um, deeper V back with crossed straps. And I haven't made that version, actually. The version I'm wearing today is this plain version here because I thought it would work well for a winter layering look, more of a classic pinafore style. But I do love this version, and I know this dress is called a sundress, and I think it would be really pretty as a sundress with this cross strap back, so maybe that's something I might make at some point in the future. But I've only made one version of the Fiona sundress so far, and it's this wintry version. And I made it in this stretch denim fabric, I got from Fabric Godmother and I find this stretch denim works really well because it's quite a close fitting pinafore so the stretch denim just gives it a little bit more ease and comfort to it which I quite like um, and then I added on these sort of silver jeans buttons to give it quite like a denim-y kind of jeansy look to it and I use my prim vario pliers to put them on they work really well with these denim buttons because I know I've tried with the hammer before and haven't got on very well but yeah so this is my version um, in terms of sizing um, again the Fiona um, sundress actually is one of Closet Core's patterns that doesn't have an extended size range. I don't know whether they're planning to extend it at some point in the future, but at the moment it only goes from a US 0 up to a US 20, up to a larger size of bust, 46 inches. And when I made my version, I decided to make a toile of this um, pattern because, because I knew it was going to be quite close fitting. I just wanted to make sure it did fit me in the right places. So I used some um, cheaper kind of calico type fabric to make a toile and I did end up tweaking it a little bit. I think I ended up bringing it in around the waist a little bit. Maybe the um, darts at the back of the skirt I might have taken in slightly just to give a bit of fit around the back because I have got a slight sway back. So that needed to bring me in a little bit. So I was really happy that I made a toile so that I could kind of nail the fit before I cut into my denim fabric and I'm really happy with the fit now. I'll stand up a bit so you can see a little bit of what it looks like. 
Yeah, it's actually really comfy to wear in the stretch denim and I'm not sure if I mentioned the stretch denim came from Fabric Godmother and I got it quite a while ago so I'm not sure this particular one will be in stock but I'll link their current range of denims worth what they've got in stock at the moment. It's really actually quite comfy to wear. Um, oh, I'll turn around so you can see the little bit of the back. See, I went for just the straight back straps and actually um, it was a bit of an involved um, so it's quite a bit of a fiddly one but it came together really nicely. I do really like closet cores instructions so if you fancied a bit more of a challenging pinafore dress to make I definitely recommend this one it does have a lovely shape to it too with the princess seams so that's what I'm wearing today I'll put a picture so you can see what it looks like on so I took this picture just when I got back from the school run so I've got on this top and um, pinafore together with a pair of sheer tights and just a pair of trainers so that's going to give me a bit of a casual look and it also worked well for sort of running after my children as they raced up the hill towards school on their scooters this morning that's what I'm wearing today and it's really comfy actually the stretch denim works really well for this one and um, the closet core does say you can make it in a medium weight woven like a denim or a poplin or a linen or a chambray or a twill but stretch denims may also be used and yeah I think that works really well and I haven't seen so many of these popping up on Instagram actually it's not a pattern I've seen a lot of but I think it's a really nice one with some really pretty details and I do love the princess seams to it I do think it works really well even though it's called a sundress pattern I do think it works really well layered up for winter too so that's why I'm wearing today, but I better pop off now and get on with my day, and I'll see you again tomorrow, which will be Wednesday. I feel this week's was in by already. So yeah, see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Wednesday now, and it's just coming up to lunchtime here, and I thought before I go and make myself some lunch, I pop on and share with you what I'm wearing today. And today it's a very gloomy, overcast day outside. The last couple of days have been quite cool, but the sun's been shining. It's been quite nice and bright, but there's no sign of the sun out there today the sky is covered in gray clouds i think actually it might just have started raining the rain was definitely forecast so yeah quite a gray day and today i've got on one of my favorite dress patterns for this sort of transitional weather and it's a woven dress pattern it's this one here is the cassiope dress pattern by i am patterns and it's just a dress pattern I find really easy and relaxed to wear. And um, if I can't think of what to wear in the morning, I often reach one of my Cassiope dress. I've got about three, I think. Um, but yeah, the dress pattern is for a woven dress with a gathered skirt. It's got quite a wide neckline, so you can just pull it on over your head. There are no zips or fastenings on this pattern. I'll pop my hair back so you can see the neckline. And then it's sewn up with raglan sleeves, which means, yeah, it's quite a speedy, simple sew. There's no setting in of, sort of round sleeves needed. And the sleeves have this cool bat wing shape that I think adds a nice feature to the dress pattern. And it's designed to be quite loose and oversized, so it's kind of like a baby doll smock style dress. And it's just really comfy to wear. And in terms of the sizing, I've got the pay pattern that goes from a European 36 up to a European 46. But there's a wider size range available in PDF on the IM Patterns website which takes you from a European size 34, which is designed for a bust of 31 inches, up to a European size 52, which is designed for a bust of 45 inches. There's loads of ease built into this pattern because it's designed to be oversized. I've always made the size 36, which is designed for a bust of 32 inches, but the actual finished garment measurements that that size show a bust of 38 and a half inches. So yeah, loads of room in this one. It's just a really nice, easy, comfy one to wear. And the version I'm wearing today, I made in a viscose twill fabric, which I think makes it a little bit more cosy than the versions I have in a viscose chalet fabric. But also it's quite nice and drapey, so I think it works really well for this pattern. But yes, it's quite a nice cosy viscose twill fabric. It's got a black base and then this sort of geometric print on in some different shades of grey. Um, and I think it's quite a cool print and works quite well with a pair of black tights. This fabric came from Minerva quite a long time ago. I actually had a look just now to see if it was still in stock because I think some of their fabrics they keep in stock for quite a while, but unfortunately this one isn't in stock any longer. But I pretty much made the pattern per the pattern envelope and the only thing I did was shorten the skirt quite a bit because I think the first version I made, I think this was the first version actually I made, and I made the um, length of the skirt per the pattern. It felt a little bit frumpy on me because it was a bit long. So by taking a few inches off, it kind of created like the sort of baby doll look that I quite like. So I'll put up a picture so you can see what it looks like on. I've just gone on with a pair of black tights. It's not cold enough to need a cardigan today. So that's why I'm wearing now. Um, today, I mean, I'm going to head off now and make myself some lunch. And then after lunch, I'm popping to a friend's house. We're going to have a cup of tea before school pickup. So that should be nice and a perfect way to spend um, a sort of rainy, gloomy afternoon. 
So yeah, that's uh, my plan for this afternoon. So I'll leave you now and I'll see you again for tomorrow, which will be Thursday. This week is definitely dashing past. So yeah, see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Thursday morning now and the sun is back out this morning, which is really nice. It's lovely and bright out there today. So I think yesterday was a bit of a blip with all the rain. And today I've got on one of my favourite dresses and it's a dress I made using this pattern here, which is the Myosotis dress pattern by Deer and Doe. And it's a really nice shirt dress pattern for woven fabrics. I'll show you all the details. You can make kind of a classic shirt dress here with the short sleeves and a gathered skirt. And it's got a button down bodice, a band collar and this sort of pretty V shaping above the buttons. Or you can make this more ruffly version with a skirt ruffle and a sleeve ruffle too. And it just sews up really nicely this pattern and I find it really comfy to wear. In terms of sizing, it doesn't have the biggest size range ever. I've got the paper pattern which goes from a European 34 up to a European 46. But a bit like the iron patterns Cassiope dress I was wearing today, if you go on the Deer and Doe's website there's a slightly extended size range available on there in PDF. Um, which takes up to a size 52 which is designed for a bust of 45 and 5 eighths of an inch but this pattern is designed to be oversized it describes an oversized shirt dress pattern but i've actually always sized down when i've made it so i've always gone for the european size 34 which is the smallest size available which is kind of bang on for my bust measurement but my waist and hips are two sizes larger but i've always wanted to give it more of a fitted look i've not wanted like a super oversized look on it which is why i've sized down on those measurements rather than grading out and the version i'm wearing today is actually a combination of both these two versions so i've gone for the short sleeves from this version but then i've added on the skirt ruffle from this version and i made this version i'm wearing today in this really lovely double gauze fabric and it came from Lamazi Fabrics, but quite a long time ago, so I doubt it's still in stock, but I'll link their current double gauze range. But it's a really pretty navy colour, and it's got the crinkly um, texture of a classic double gauze. And it's got this um, dandelion print all over, which I think is quite pretty. And I went for little white buttons on the bodice, these three white buttons, to kind of tie in with the white from the dandelion print. And I made a couple of other adjustments on this dress, as well as sizing down on the waist and hips measurements. I also lengthen the bodice slightly to make it sit a bit nearer my natural waist. So I think I lengthen the bodice by an inch. I'll stand up a bit so you can see where that sits on me now. And I also added in waist ties. The pattern doesn't come with waist ties, but I just drafted my own waist ties, um, this, to sort of pull it in at the back a little bit. I'll turn around a bit so you can see um, how that looks. It just cinched it in a little bit at the back. And I think that quite um, shows off the nice darts on this pattern because the pattern has two darts on the bodice here, which gives some really nice shaping. So I think it kind of does work really well, pulled in a little bit by the waist ties and cinched in. And it's really comfy to wear this one. I wasn't sure if I'd be a bit cold in it. This morning I need a cardigan um, because the weather is cooler. But actually the double gauze is so nice and cosy that I haven't found I needed a cardigan yet. So it's really nice and comfy to wear and I just find it fits really nicely. It's not tight at all around the shoulders. There's plenty of room, but it still feels fitted. So I think it's just a really nicely drafted pattern, this one. And I put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on and see the skirt ruffle and everything. I've just worn it today with some black tights and some black boots. It's a really nice, comfy one to wear. So I definitely recommend this pattern. I've got a couple of my Asota dress and I always enjoy getting them out. So yeah, that's why I'm wearing today. I think now I'm going to go off and do a bit of gardening because with all the rain yesterday, I think it'll be perfect for doing a bit of weeding. So I'll probably get changed out of this and into some gardening clothes so I don't get this dress all muddy. But I'll have it back on a bit later once I've cleaned up after doing the gardening. So that is my plan for this morning. So I'll leave you now and get on with that. And I'll see you again for tomorrow, which will be Friday. The last day of the week. I can't believe it's gone so fast. I keep saying that, I know. So yeah, see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello, it's Friday now and it's another lovely sunny day here today, which is quite a nice way to end the week. And it's just coming up to half past 10 here. This morning I went out for a run with my husband, which is quite nice. We don't usually go running together, we usually go separately, but he hadn't been out for a while because he's been really busy with work. So I said, you fancy coming with me? We just went around the block. It was quite nice to have a chat as we were running. And now he's getting ready to go into the office um, for a meeting today, which is quite unusual. He's mainly working at home these days. So once he's gone, I'll have the house all to myself, which will be a bit weird. Um, but yeah, I've got a few chores to do to get on with to keep me busy. And then after school today, we're having a bit of a meet up with a few friends and children and we're going to the park and out for dinner. So that should be a really nice way to end the week. But before I go and get on with my chores, I thought I'd pop on and share with you what I'm wearing today. And today I've got on a pair of jeans. I thought I'd mix it up because I've been wearing dresses most of the week. Um, and I thought that'd be nice and practical for going to the park. 
but I've paired my ready to wear jeans with a handmade top and this is a blouse pattern I really love actually and it's one of my more recent blouse patterns I've discovered and it's from this magazine here which is the Fibre Mood magazine issue number 16. So I'm fairly new to Fibre Mood patterns and this is the only magazine I've bought from them to date but I have really enjoyed making two of the patterns from this magazine and it does make me think I'd like to try more. But I'll show you the details of the Ermine blouse which is this blouse. It's the pattern that really grabbed me from this magazine and made me really want to try a Fibre Mood pattern. It's a really pretty blouse. I think it's quite a simple design but has some pretty details that make it a little bit extra pretty I think. So yeah, it's a blouse with a round neck, um, so no, no collar, and it's finished with bias binding, which I quite like. I'll show you the neckline. I quite like that neckline, quite simple. Then it's got a button down front and quite simple sleeves that are just finished with a little turned up hem. And again, I quite like that simple detail. But then the pretty sort of extra detail on this blouse is the gathering. There's this V-shaped triangular yoke at the front with gathering underneath, and then more gathering at the back as well. And I think those details just make it a really pretty blouse. It's nice to sew, it's sewed up really nicely and it's really comfy to wear too. I find the fitting is really nice. Um, in terms of sizing, the Five Mood magazine goes from I think an extra small up to a 3XL, which takes you from a bust of 30 inches up to a bust of 58 inches. And when I made this blouse, I went for the extra small size, which covers um, sizes four and six. And I think my measurements put me towards the top end of the extra small category. But when I looked at the finished garment measurements, there was enough ease in this blouse for me to be happy to go with that size. And I think it fits nicely. I did lengthen the sleeves in the body slightly. Um, I usually lengthen the sleeves on things like I mentioned before this week. And I thought I'd lengthen the body a bit just so I can make sure I can tuck it into jeans or a skirt and it won't kind of pull out or anything. But it sewed up really nicely. And um, the version I'm wearing today, I've made two versions now. This is the first version I made. I made it in this really pretty viscose fabric from Minerva with this sort of, sort of deep red background and these cute little flowers on with blue bits in the middle. I do love a ditzy floral and I really like this red colour and I think it goes nicely with a pair of jeans and then added on little blue buttons to sort of tie in with the blue in the fabric. I'll stand up and get a bit close so you can see the buttons. But the fabric's really nice and drapey so I think it works really well for a blouse. I think it's still in stock at Minerva in a few colourways. It was quite inexpensive, I will link it down below. It's really nice quality viscose and really nice and soft and comfy to wear. And in terms of the construction of the blouse, I always mention a couple of things with fibre mood patterns. If you buy the magazine, the patterns in the that the come with the magazine don't include seam allowances, so you have to add them. And the magazine shows you how to add them and where to add them. And it is quite simple, but it is an extra step that makes the process a little bit longer to make one of their patterns for the magazine. I think if you get a PDF version of their patterns, they come with seam allowances included. I haven't bought one, but I think that they come with seam allowances included. So that might be a better option if you're not keen on the idea of tracing out and adding seam allowances. And then also I mentioned that on the Fibre Mood website, if you create an account, you can gain access to more detailed instructions because the instructions in the magazine are very much picture based and fairly limited. Um, but then there are more wordy, detailed instructions available to download on the Fibre Mood website. So I downloaded those to the Amin blouse and I found they helped a lot. But it came together really nicely. I love the gathering. You can't see it so well on this busy fabric, um, but it is there. I'll show you the back actually. I'll turn around so you can see a bit of the back. Hopefully you could see a bit of the gathering at the back there. I just really love that detail. I think I'll probably make more Amin blouses in future because I find them really comfy to wear and I think they work really well with a pair of jeans to maybe dress up quite a casual outfit. But I'll put a picture up of me wearing this outfit so you can see what it looks like on. Um, it's a nice comfy casual one to be running around the house doing some chores in. So that is what I'm wearing today, my five mood Amin blouse. So that is the last day of this week and of this week of my handmade wardrobe. So I've really enjoyed popping on every day and sharing what I've been wearing and I hope you've enjoyed hearing about it too. And if you have enjoyed this video as ever, please could you give it a thumbs up? And if you're new to my channel, then thank you very much for popping by. Please do subscribe and then press the bell icon too so you're notified when my future videos come out. So I'm planning to be back again uh, midweek next week with another video. So I'll hopefully see you then. But in the meantime, I hope you have a lovely few days and yeah, see you again soon. Bye.